Many people buy an iPad and end up using it just to watch videos, browse the web, or jot down a few notes. But what really makes a difference is not whether or not you use an iPad, but whether you know how to use its productivity features. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through eight of the most essential, practical, and often overlooked productivity tips for the iPad. If you want to use your iPad for paperless learning or turn it into a real work tool, this video is a must watch. 1. iPad Gesture Tips Maybe you often need to drag apps one by one to organize your home screen, but if you long press one app icon and move it slightly, then use another finger to click on other app icons, you can batch move them to another home screen. Maybe you only know how to swipe to batch select photos, but if you long press one photo and move it slightly, then use another finger to select other photos, you can batch move them to another app. Swipe left or right with four fingers to quickly switch between apps. Long press on empty space on the home screen and click on the carousel icon to sort your home screens or even hide them. For more advanced tricks, you can check out my past videos. 2. Virtual Keyboard Tips Maybe you only know to tap the shift key repeatedly to switch between upper and lower case, but if you long press it, you can lock it in uppercase, and once you release it, it will switch back to lowercase. This makes switching much easier. Maybe you only know that swiping down on a key gives you quick access to numbers and symbols, but if you long press a number key, you can quickly input numbers and symbols, and you can continue swiping down to access even more symbols, releasing to return to the letter input. Maybe you select text like this, but if you long press the spacebar and tap the virtual keyboard again, you can drag to select text. Pinch with two fingers to switch to the small keyboard mode, and spread two fingers to return to the full keyboard mode. 3. Apple Pencil Tips In any search box, you can write directly with your Apple Pencil, and it will automatically convert it to text. If two words are combined, you can draw a vertical line in the middle to add a space and drawing again will remove it. Use the smudge function to quickly erase content. When using Apple Pencil for note-taking, you can double tap the body of the pencil to quickly switch to the eraser, or you can gently squeeze the pencil to bring up the shortcut tools. Swipe from the lower right corner of the screen to open quick notes, allowing you to view information and take notes at the same time, which is really efficient. Swipe from the lower left corner of the screen to take a screenshot. If you're in a browser, not only can you capture the current screen, but you can also save a long screenshot of the entire web page. Just go to Settings, find Apple Pencil, and you can set up shortcut actions and the handwriting feature. For more advanced tricks, check out my previous videos. 4. Split Screen Tips If you're using GoodNotes to take notes, you can open the dock, long press, and drag another app to the left or right of the screen to split the screen. You can adjust the size by dragging the dividing line. You can also drag a third app from the dock to either side of the screen to create a floating window and resize it. This way, you can handle tasks on three different pages at once. You can even open a video and enable picture-in-picture -picture mode, floating on the screen, allowing you to handle a fourth task. This way, you can watch a tutorial video, check references, take notes, and chat with friends all at the same time. Five iPad and Mac integration. If you have an image document on your Mac that needs to be signed, just click on Edit, then Markup, and extend it to your iPad to sign it with your Apple Pencil. It will instantly show up on your Mac. If you go to the Mac display settings, find the advanced settings, and enable Allow Pointer and Keyboard to move between nearby Macs or iPads. Then, on your iPad, go to General, and enable Cursor and Keyboard under AirPlay and Continuity then arrange the displays to match the actual positions. Now, your iPad can share the mouse and keyboard from your Mac, and when you finish typing on your Mac, you can immediately continue typing on your iPad. If you open the control center on your Mac and turn on screen mirroring, you can extend the display to your iPad, using it as a secondary screen for more task processing. For example, you can edit a video on your Mac while checking scripts on your iPad. 6. iPad and iPhone integration on your iPhone, three-finger pinch a photo, and on your iPad's Notes app, three-finger spread and the photo will magically paste. Text you copied on your iPhone can also be pasted directly into your iPad. In your iPhone settings, find accessibility, enable control nearby devices, and connect your iPad. 
allowing you to remotely control your iPad, such as playing or pausing music or returning to the home screen. In iPhone settings, go to the phone app and enable allow iPad calls on other devices. Now, if you receive a call, you can answer it on your iPad. If your phone runs out of battery, your iPad can also serve as a portable charger for your phone. 7. iPad Type-C Port Tips The iPad's Type-C port has many functions and it's not just for charging. You can use a full-function Type-C cable, one end connected to your iPad and the other to a monitor, turning the display into an iPad extension screen. With iPad OS 26, this allows for multitasking and turns your iPad into a mini Mac computer. If your iPad runs low on storage, you can use the Type-C port to connect an external hard drive and store large files, freeing up space on your iPad. If you connect a dock to your iPad, you can insert memory cards to expand storage and even connect to an Ethernet cable for faster internet, offering a better network experience than Wi-Fi. 8. Must-have iPad apps To boost iPad productivity, you definitely need these productivity apps, including note-taking, mind mapping, drawing, editing, and photo editing tools. The first is GoodNotes, which offers a perfect handwriting note-taking experience with various brushes and colors, saving you from using a lot of stationery. You can also draw shapes and lines, use the lasso tool to organize and beautify your notes, making them more vivid and beautiful. The second is Margin Note. If you're a student or researcher reading a textbook or a document, you can break it into mind maps with Margin Note, making future review more efficient. The third is Procreate. It provides powerful brushes, colors, and layer functionality, making it easy to create beautiful artwork just like on paper, even more efficiently than traditional drawing. Whether it's sketching, watercolor, oil painting, or anime design, you can easily create on an iPad. The fourth is Final Cut Pro. With this, you can easily achieve the same editing experience as on a computer, providing multimedia, multi-track windows, along with seamless Apple Pencil support in the Apple ecosystem. The fifth is Affinity Photo, one of the most powerful photo editing apps on iPad. It works wonderfully with Apple Pencil, offering smooth, precise edits, making fine-tuned selections and touch-ups much easier than with a mouse or a keyboard. That's it for the eight essential iPad productivity tips. Some of these tips may have been new to you, but learning them will definitely make your work and study much more efficient. If you want to learn more about these tips, I'll be diving deeper into them in future videos, so make sure to subscribe to my channel. If you're interested in the accessories I featured in this video, you can find the links in the description below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.